choice of caliber is very personal and there are strong arguments that can be made for most calibers ranging from smaller calibers such as the 243 to magnum calibers. However, when it comes to choosing a caliber, you need to take into account the type of shooting that you will be doing, the beast that you are hunting and the type of ground that you'll be stalking over. The following film is aimed at caliber choice for the Highlands of Scotland and to get a professional opinion I speak to Colin Fraser, head stalker at the Downess Estate in the West Highlands, and professional stalker Jason Doyle of Field Sports Ireland. I start by asking Jason why calibre choice is so important. You often hear people saying that it's all about bullet placement, not about calibre choice or bullet choice, and yes, in theory, that is the case. I mean, if you put a, a 2 2 Hornet in the right place on a deer, you will kill them. And you get a lot of people coming up to the Highlands with 243s saying that they're a fantastic shot and they never get it wrong. Well, I can't get it right all the time and I've never met anyone that can. Deer are always moving. It's very easy to, just as you take the shot, the deer will move. It's also quite difficult at times to be 100% sure whether a deer is totally broadside or not. They can be slightly turned. And I've heard it m more times than I care to remember. A guy stands over the carcass and says, oh, I didn't realise it was facing that way or it was tilted slightly this way. Colin is a stalker that has been around the block. I ask him about his first experiences. I started in, when I was 14, in the early 70s, started going out with stalkers at that point and uh, it was a 243 that they used and uh, like you were saying, it's, if it hits mm. the spot it will do the job but I found personally if you hit a bone in the shoulder, it sometimes stopped here. It yeah. didn't go through it. Whether that's just that yeah. these days the bullets were slightly different than they are now, I don't know. But that always puts a wee mm. doubt, in, your doubt in my mind yeah. just with the 243. But to be honest, I've seen folk use it very effectively yeah. in the last few years. Yeah, I mean, the 243 is a great calibre, and personally, if it was a choice between a 243 or a 6.555 mm -hmm. with factory ammunition, I would choose a 243. Mm -hmm. um, but what I do like about the bigger calibers, 270, 30 or 6, is when it does go slightly wrong, you always get that exit hole, you always have a trail that you can follow. 243 often, everything stays in the animal. If you've hit a bone or you've had a slightly angled shot, you don't get that exit that you need if the animal is in forestry and it's gone even 50 yards into, into timber. You need a trail to follow, either for you or your dog. You, you see, I'm really disappointed because uh, 308 is my favourite. Neither one of you have mentioned it as a viable um, What What are your thoughts? Well, I had no experience of 308 until about three years ago. I oh, really? And then on the state here is a 308, the state has a state rifle. And yeah, I can't fault it. I mean, I get ballistic tip bullets for it, the Federal 150 grain ballistic tips. And that's what all the guests tend yeah. to use here. And I'm fairly impressed with it. Good. But yeah. personally, I'm still a fan of the 278. Yeah. Albeit. A little, a little bit flatter shooting, isn't it? Yeah. But just a tiny bit more with the 270. It has. Certainly, 30 years ago, the yeah. 270 seemed to be frowned mm -hmm. upon. All the sort of sporting estates were using the 275 right base. Yeah. The yeah. 7 by 57 was all very favourite calibres and the, the, the 270 was seen as a sort of uh, contractor's tool. Really? Yeah. Because you, know. you worked Forestry Commission for fair Yeah, I did. Yeah. I worked for Forestry and Commission. And they're 270s in T T3s, weren't they, for a long well, time? Well, I started off with the 270 in the CF2, the old BSA, and then oh, really? uh, moved on to like, a, a Parker Hale Deluxe yeah. 1200 or something like that. Yeah. And it was probably uh, probably around 92 they seemed to sort of change their tact altogether and started buying this really good equipment because prior to that it was the Eastern European binoculars mm. yeah. like huge heavy things <laughs> the scope I started with, with was a 4x32 I really yeah that's right shot a lot yeah. of deer with that yeah yeah I mean yeah. Uh, I've shot a lot of deer with these yeah. um, but around 92 they handed me a man liquor synthetic stock yeah. 
a decent scope and a set of Saborskis and uh, yeah. Things have just got better ever Things since. Have, I definitely. And, and one, one thing I know Jason you'd mentioned before I think last time we were up here you quite like I mean none of you mentioned the magnum powers but I think you said you really enjoyed the seven millimeter rims of magnum was it? Yeah I love the seven millimeter rim mag and I've sort of been on the brink of buying one several times. I did have one years ago in a in a Steyr, um, and I've used one in France. I've used one in New Zealand, and yeah, I really like the way it works. There's a couple of things for me that has sort of kept me away from buying one. One is magazine capacity. You're usually reducing your magazine capacity by one, which for most people won't make any difference, but <clears throat> me when I'm in a cutting situation, just that extra shot can make a difference. Mm. Or if you're on a driven hunt, every shot counts. Mm. And availability of ammo, uh, where I am in Ireland, we can't reload. So it can be quite difficult to mm. get a good selection of factory ammo for some of the more unusual calibers like the 7mm Rem Mag. And probably up until about 8 or 10 years ago, you were dealing with much heavier moderators for the Magnum calibers. Mm. That has changed now, you can get the same lightweight moderators for the Magnum calibers that you can for the standard. But I really like the way the Magnums kill. We get a lot of um, English and European clients come to Ireland using 300 wind mags. Yeah. And yes, they do a fantastic job on putting deer down. I'm a little bit shy of recoil as well. And that extra recoil has been an issue for me in the past. And that's why 270, 30 or 6 is about as far as I'm comfortable. So that makes a good compromise. Yeah, already. yeah. And you, you mentioned the 308, and I really do like the 308. But again, it's just when you step the range out a little bit, and if you've missed range slightly, especially on the hill like this, you've a lot of grass and reeds and rocks, and you can be confident that you're getting a range on your deer, but your rangefinder is actually pinging something a little bit closer. And if you've misjudged your range by 25 yards, even at 220, 230 yards. With a 308 and a heavy bullet, the, the drop can be enough to, to cause a, a wounded animal. Mm. And 308, I don't feel recoils less than a 270. Um, depending on the rifle you use, I've shot some rifles in 308 where the recoil has felt more snappy and I've lost view of my target. And one thing that's very important for me is that I have a rifle that I can see my strike with. Where if you're stalking on your own, you see the strike on the animal, you know where it's been hit because sometimes it can be right on the edge of timber and just from being able to see that strike, you know whether you have a good strike or a poor strike. And wind is the big thing here. No matter how good you are, you can't always read the wind properly. So it doesn't matter how accurate you have been in your shot, if the wind has taken that bullet slightly off target, yeah. I like a calibre that doesn't recoil so much that I can't see that strike. And so what's the conclusion? I ask both Colin and Jason for their top calibre for the Highlands and also at what range they choose to zero. Well, I've done a fair bit of woodland stalking and open hill stalking and I've got to say the 270 is my favourite calibre. Definitely it's uh, a flat shooting calibre. I use 130 grain yeah. bullets. That suits me from close range right out to 220 meters, you yeah. don't really have to consider adjusting an awful lot for that, so the 270 for me, definitely. And I think you were saying that your sort of chosen zero range is, is what, somewhere sort of 150, 200, what, where, what do you go for? Yeah, I, I zero around 180, about 180, and again, very little adjustment to be made, slightly higher at 100, but uh, for normal chest shooting, no adjustment really out. 250. Sure. Yeah. And Jason, does that uh, match pretty much what you, you think? Pretty much, yeah. I've always used 270. I've gone away from it several times to bigger and smaller calibres and I've just always found myself coming back to the 270. For me it just does the job nicely. It's that um, nice balance of power and not too much recoil. Um, I use a 130 grain ballistic tip bullet. I'm not worried about meat damage at all. What I want is an animal dead as close to the shot site as possible and I zero at 150 but I always use a ballistic turret or a ballistic reticle so you can compensate quite easily but I never really worry about it because we're always chest shooting and I never worry about adjusting the zero until you get past 200. So there you have it, it's the 270 Winchester generating around 2,700 foot-pounds of energy and 2,850 feet per second at the muzzle 
that wins top spot. It's flat shooting, powerful and manageable and our stalker's choice for the best Highland calibre. If you'd like to experience a range of calibres then why not contact us at County Deer Stalking where we can offer you the chance to try out a variety of calibres ranging from the 243 all the way to a 416. Go to www.countydeerstalking.com forward slash firearms training for more details.